Mm -hmm. Hi guys, welcome. Uh, John here from Peach Guitars and I'm joined my good friend Scott McKeon, awesome guitarist and the founder of SM Fuzz Pedals, which is the, uh, the topic of uh, conversation today. Doing all right, Scott? I'm doing good, yeah. Good excellent. to be here. Yeah, yeah excellent stuff. So uh, I'm sure uh, a lot of you guys out there will know Scott for his solo material and, and also playing with uh, other artists as well. Um, but I guess a lot of a lot of you have probably come to finding about Scott from the uh, from the original SM Fuzz pedal there. Can you just tell us a little bit how the uh, that original fuzz yeah, came so, about? So I made a pedal um, sort of back in the day when I was. <laughs> Uh, sort of growing up and it was uh, a germanium basically like a fuzz face mm. and that that was on my board for years and it was a ac128 um, pedal looks pretty much like that mm -hmm. um, and I used to use it all the time I used it on my first album and then I'd occasionally I would do gigs like opening for people like Joe Bonamassa and mm. um, Doyle and people like that mm. and and Joe was the first person that said to me he's like oh you should make some of those mm. and, and sell them and I was, I kind of like toyed with the idea and didn't think too much of it. And then um, when I was in London, I met a friend of mine, Luke, Luke Higgins, and he sort of said the same thing to me. And we came up with this, mm. his uncle was an electronics engineer. So we took the kind of basic circuit that I had in my pedal and improved a few things and added like a bias control. And, and we did the first batch probably like 10 years ago. Mm. And yeah, I, I had one of those. I think we, uh, we did a little trade when you got that Duesenberg guitar. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I ended up with one back then as oh, well. Cool. And um, you see those original ones uh, selling for like seven, eight hundred quid, don't you? Exactly. On eBay yeah. And stuff, so, so we we kind of got um, you know I got quite busy with session work and playing with like Tom and touring and stuff like that. So the pedal kind of went on the back burner for yeah. a while, and it was also really hard. It's quite time consuming trying to source like germanium transistors yeah and all the components. i mean this this is a wider problem isn't it we're, yeah. we're starting to see now that more uh pedal makers that were, were using specific or certain kind of tolerance germanium transistors in fuzzies and other pedals really really struggling now to get hold of good quality sounding um parts yeah. so that's a struggle that you guys have had yeah, yeah yeah more recently we had we had a batch um back in the you know like a thousand transistors which is kind of seen us through up until now mm. um but it's hard because we have like yeah quite strict tolerances for the yeah each um, each transistor yeah so you can't just out of say a hundred transistors like three quarters of them aren't usable yeah we always hear those old stories of like when um you know uh, stevie ray's uh, guys were you know modding his pedals and you hear it from roger mary they used to go and buy 20 fuzz pedals and then he'd just try and make one that sounded yeah. good out of all of the yeah. parts so. i guess that's why with the old ones you'd get one that sounded great one that sounded all right one that sounded yeah shit. <laughs> and, and did you have kind of any sort of um, electrical knowledge on building these things or was did you get like a Pretty, kit originally yeah it was, it was like a sort of then, bit of a kit that i saw yeah. online and i kind of went away and made it and it was really badly soldered together and um, it wasn't until I met um, uh, my friend Luke had had this his uncle who's like this old-fashioned kind of electronics engineer. Yeah. And he had all this knowledge about yeah. circuits that we kind of um, you know this sort of went into production. Um, and then it wasn't we kind of stopped making them about four or five years ago. Just like I said, because I got busy and sourcing mm -hmm. parts and and then last year when COVID hit you know for the first time in quite well, a long we'd time we spoke but, a lot yeah. haven't we about you know like how can you make some money yeah basically kind yeah. Of, uh, you know you know your main source of income had gone hadn't it, it, yeah basically so and so we, we started yeah we started seeing them on ebay for like you know 700 quid and you're mm. like hang, hang on a sec yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and uh internally are these pedals still pretty much the same as those original ones yeah it's pretty much the same as the uh old one apart from that the pot is slightly different the fuzz because we, we wanted to get a bit more control with the the amount of fuzz sure um so that that's the only thing that's changed but yeah yeah but the great thing uh with this pedal is uh i mean you can have a play for in a minute but it's not all just about balls to the wall fuzz it, you know it can do so much from the volume control yeah the guitar I, I think people and... forget that with um with a pedal like this is that depending on what pickup you're on what amp you're going through what guitar mm. you're playing where you have the volume set there's quite a lot of sounds even though there's only two knobs on the pedal there's quite a lot of sounds and tones you can get 
Yeah, it's almost just like a, you know an instrument in its own right, isn't it? And the way that how it reacts to the uh, yeah. the changes from the volume and the tone control, as you say. I see if a fuzz pedal is a little bit like you know when you play through like a, a smaller like old tweed amp. Yeah. And when it's up full, it's yeah, like you've cramped. got no range, have you? Really, yeah. everything, all the range is coming from what you're feeding into it, yeah. isn't it? So I mean, I like personally how I like using it is into like a sort of fairly not clean, but like yeah. an amp that's like that's got um, yeah. Just a little bit of hair on it, like yeah. it's just starting to break up. Yeah, but that can handle. Um, so not normally a hundred and fifty watt two yeah. rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that will do it. Yeah, um, but something that can handle pedals in front of it. Yeah, it's if, got a good high headroom amp. Yeah. If you put that in, if you put a fuzz into an amp that's already on the edge of, like giving yeah. giving up, it's not going to work as well. I no. Think. And that probably comes from in my head. Hendrix using big amps, 200 watt heads or 100 well, yeah, watt Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time he had that massive amount of kind of headroom, but on those earlier gigs, you know, when he was using, um, you know, sometimes he used Fenders and even um, like Sound City amps Sound City, and stuff yeah. like that, you, could, you couldn't even really tell when the fuzz is on because he's just kind of doing yeah. a lot from the guitar, isn't he, as yeah. well? And um, as it got to, like, my favourite Hendrix tone is the band Gypsy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And when you, you know, when he kicks in the fuzz and he's rolling down the volume on the guitar, that's when you're getting the same dynamics as what you're getting out of, yeah. out of, out of this. Yeah. So uh, why don't you just give it a, a quick okay. train on the clean sound and then right. we'll work right. Whoa. So it's just got a bit of a little yeah, bit of Yeah, there's a bit of it. kind of bit of break up there, but it's kind of it's not giving up on no, the low end. No. So with the fuzz kind of this is up probably how I'd set it, like pretty full, I guess. Okay. Um the volume So what the, the the fuzz is on full. Uh yeah, the fuzz is on full and the volume's like I don't know, maybe eight or nine. Yeah. Something. Something like that. So I kind of I tend to judge it by how loud your clean sound is. Yeah. And then when you switch the fuzz on, you kind of want it to go up a bit, but yeah. not, no, not a crazy not mass, amount. No, you know. no. So, on on the neck pickup with the fuzz up full, you get quite a woolly, you know, yeah. sort of. Uh, but then you only have to back it off like a small amount. Yeah. And then you, that snap back into yeah, the treble strings, and you, and you can it? play yeah. chords. And yeah. So yeah, that's kind of like that's your signature sound, isn't it? Really? Yeah, that's I your... guess so. Yeah, like a woolly, kind of fuzzy thing, and that also works great. To be honest, most of the time with the fuzz, I probably would use the, the bridge pickup because it just get you just get a slight more of a I wouldn't say like Les Paul, but it's yeah, kind of yeah, with, it's more with, of that kind of um, yeah British blues kind yeah. of. That's great as well for like kind of rhythmy sort of stuff. Yeah. So you can. And then all the way up to like, you know, more lead yeah. sort of stuff. And then when you do go to like the neck pickup with a volume rolled back, it just sounds so straight, doesn't yeah. it? Anyway. Yeah, so you kind of get like this um, sort of break up and a bit more top end. So if the clean sound is like, I don't know, like like that with the with the pedal on. Yeah. But the, the but rolled back, it's roll just more gain, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So you, so you,
a yeah, bit. Yeah, I kind of like to uh, use a fuzz almost with a vo with a volume roll down to almost emulate the sound of like a crank Marshall type yeah, sort of amp, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you can get that more kind of sort of British sort of sound with it. Yeah. And and then of course you turn the pedal off and then you're back to that kind of nice kind of sort of warm, cleany. Yeah, it's that sound that you used to cleany, yeah. clean American. But I, I tend not to use the fuzz too much with like out of phase sort of stuff. Yeah. It, it tends to be sort of neck or bridge oh, yeah. for me. Yeah. So you are almost going into like a Les Paul mode, aren't you? Using like yeah. the woolly sounding neck or going to the bright sounding bridge yeah, pickup. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, it gives you so much more of a wider kind of tonal palette, a really good fuzz than just a, you know, a tube screamer derivative type well, of pedal, Yeah, it? I mean, it's a bit more old fashioned. I always think of like tube screamers as, as I don't know when they came out, 70, late 70s. Mm. So uh, as soon as you use a fuzz or you kind of use the clean up thing with a fuzz, it's just, it sounds way more like an amp or a bit more yeah, retro. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's a yeah. bit more yeah. sort of, you know, 60s, 70s, early 70s sort of sound. Yeah. Um, but it's just kind of like, I'm sure you're you're the same, but like when you play, it's almost like you're constantly... Well, there's just, you know, even tuned. just the tiniest amount of movement. Yeah. It just changes the dynamics of the sound so much and the compression, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and you don't lose the top end. No. When, you know, if you turn the guitar volume mm. down now, you lose a bit of top end. Yeah. So you almost you can almost use that as like a treble bleed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I mean that's on like, I don't know, five or six. Yeah. And it and it just reacts differently to a tube screamer because oh, yeah. you I love tube screamers and that yeah. those style pedals, but yeah. it's it's just a different beast, yeah. you know. Yeah. Just really big, thick, full yeah, sound, isn't thick, it? Yeah, sort of sound. yeah. But the top end is still, um, you know, still uh, rich, isn't it? It's not cutting your head off. A lot of those, um, when you roll the volume down, they almost go too harsh. I find. Yeah. Some of them, but that's, well, that, that's that was great. one of the things with the, the fuzz is to kind of keep um, keep some of that top end in there um, because I think for me, when you're soloing st and stuff, if I've got a, I've got a few other fuzz faces and mm -hmm. fuzz pedals. And if it's too woolly, yeah, it doesn't cut through. No, so you need a little bit of that yeah. kind of top end sparkle. Oh, it's definitely, you know, um, you know a lot of the uh, the modern fuzz faces. They're almost going into kind of a, a distortion type sound when you're on that neck pickup, and they just have no cut. Or, yeah, and they're very polite and safe sounding like that. That's like. Um, this is a fuzz, it's not like, I wouldn't ever say it'd be like my first fuzz for beginners. It's yeah. like, cause you've got to have the right amp then know the dynamics from yeah. the guitar, haven't you? It's a, like I said before, it's an instrument in its own right, isn't it? So, but uh, if you know how to work the volume and the tone on the guitar, that's yeah. when you really get the dynamics of the, of the sound. Yeah, and it will really vary sort of depending on what guitar, you, you know, what even what strap you're using, yeah. and what pickups you're using, you know. Yeah, and, and you said this, has, has this got an internal bias control then? Yeah, so well? we, we preset that to where we it should be, so yeah. I, I wouldn't advise anyone to fiddle around with it too much, no. because we, we sort of plug it into our um, testing the, the, yeah. rig and, yeah. Yeah. And, get it, and get it all set. And the importance of those, um, the germanium transistors we were talking about, that's really the key secret into trying to get that uh, well-rounded fuzz exactly yeah and those values are based on um my first pedal that i made which yeah. just ha happened to have those yeah values in it so they're kind of um pretty much based on my my original pedal and had you been trying like a nkt uh 275s and stuff like that yeah we have that we're going to do a, a version of the fuzz with the oh, right. nkts but they're they're really expensive they're like yeah. 15 quid a transistor really think. so yeah. and so if you bought like a hundred of them mm. again only like a small amount are going to work. work. Cut yeah. mustard, aren't they? Uh, yeah. So, it's, so do you, is this? Um, I know there's been some delays with the pedals. Do you anticipate that this is something that you're going to uh, be able to run for a long time, or are you always in the hunt for well, trying to get good? Always in the parts? in the hunt for some good transistors, really. So, um, at the moment, we've got a good supply, but it's always hard to know if you're going to be able to yeah. get exactly the same ones. So, what you're saying is people should go out and buy one right saying, now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. So, well, that kind of um, uh, leads us on to the to the new pedal. So we've got the yeah. the octave fuzz. 
uh, now, which came out, um, it was released, yeah, it was this year, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so I know we started talking about it um, a little while ago and you put out a few little kind of teaser things that you was working uh -huh. on it as well. How did the, this pedal come about? So I kind of selfishly just wanted to have one pedal um, that, because I always use a fuzz and I always use an octave. Yeah. And I don't think there's any other pedals that do the octave and the fuzz independently of each other. So no. I, want, I wanted to have something that I could just take and and yeah well just, you, you know. full tone used to do the uh, the ultimate octave but it never had any controls for the um the octave sound but i don't think you could ever have the octave on on its own actually thinking about it you could you could have the fuzz on and then switch the octave yeah in. i think that's what i found with a lot yeah, of those ones that's what, yeah that's what it is yeah, yeah. so these are it's both um the fuzz and the octave are totally separate or you can have them on together yeah and the fuzz in this one is a little, it's well, it's a totally different fuzz to the SM fuzz. This is more based on the, do you know the experience pedal? Yeah. So it's, it's a bit like the fuzz from that, which mm -hmm. um, uh, I designed with a, a guy called Chris uh, BG Harding, who's mm -hmm. a pedal maker. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of wanted something that was just sort of had a similar char characteristics to the SM fuzz, but just something a little bit different. I would say the fuzz on this one's probably woolier and maybe yeah. a bit crazy and it's yeah. silicon obviously so it reacts reacts differently yeah a bit differently. Well, let's just um, probably a good idea just to do a bit of a, an a to cool. sounds if we can okay so this is uh, the essence <laughs> right, that's that and then this is the fuzz um, on the the silicon first, yep. on the octa first. So it's probably a bit thicker. Big sound, yeah, really thick um, sound, isn't it? Probably more like mid, low mids in yeah. there, less top yeah. end. Yeah. Um, but it still, it still cleans up, you know, so. So it does clean up, not, yeah. not in the same way as the, no. with the germaniums, no. but. Um, probably a, a better sound for someone if you're not an experienced like fuzz user or yeah. diehard fuzz user because yeah. that's an instantly good fuzz sound straight away isn't it yeah you can't um it's 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 a bit less finicky i would say than the germanium yeah that one you're always kind of like getting the sweet spot aren't you with how you want it to be i mean exactly. all the sounds are great in it but you know it's so it's very sensitive yeah, yeah. so sensitive isn't it yeah. so and then also with this one you've got a bit more control um it cle it probably cleans up a bit more so okay. um, the thing with germaniums when you do really roll the um the fuzz right down they can be quite sort of mushy can't they yeah well, i feel like with germaniums you just have to have the pedal pretty much on full, full all just of it, on yeah. full and just do everything down. from there yeah whereas this you, you could sort of use this the fuzz side as a bit more of a kind of boost <laughs> So that's with sort of hardly, yeah. hardly any fuzz. And then we've also got like a bias control on there. So the, the bias, you can get... Really spluttery kind yeah. of gated sounds, can't yeah, you? Yeah, we was messing around with that. Yeah, like that ripped Velcro sound, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so kind of, um, I mean, I normally set it about one o'clock for yeah. just like kind of... Standard the, fuzz sounds, yeah, yeah. But if you roll it back all the way, you get... Which is quite a cool sound. Yeah. If you, you know, it's a very specific sound. You kind of use that on the um, on your new album, yeah. You? On that, uh, what is it? Name of that third song? eyewitness. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that sound with with the octave as well. Uh, on as well. Sure. We'll get to it. And so you kind of have all the way. It doesn't have to be that extreme. No. It's almost going into Octavia there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you can kind of. That's that's. Right. Quite a, I, I like playing with that sound. Yeah. And then it kind of opens up the more you really thick sound. Sort of, yeah. Sort of, if I play. So I would say it gets even woollier the more. The more you take. Yeah. yeah if, you you, if you go clockwise on the bias, yeah. Quite so 
Hendrix Yeah. yeah. really compressing there as well and yeah. pushing the amp hard so I mean it's really like just finding the point at which you, you but know, you could almost like if you want a good standard 60s type fuzz tone you just put that halfway and crank those two exactly there, yeah and then there's also like a bass cut so yeah. I, I kind of hear this more like um I don't know, like a kind of more like early 60s thing, yeah. like the Beatles-y or something. Yeah. So you, you, it just takes off, just takes off the bottom end. Just a bit more trebly kind of sound. When we when we first tried it out as well, you uh, if you use a neck humbucker and put that bass cut on, it's almost like that Queens of the Stone Age sort of oh, right. his yeah, sound yeah. that he has. So it's the kind of not dis overdrive or distortion or quite a fuzz. It's pretty pretty close yeah. to that sort of sound. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sixties sort of sound, isn't it? And then if you do the bias thing with with that one as well. The, yeah. Psychedelic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you, that was almost in that Jeff Beck um, over under sideways or whatever it's called. That oh track. yeah, yeah. It's got that sort of sound, isn't it? So, so, you, so you can get quite a few sort of variations on the on the fuzz, more so than with yeah, the uh, yeah. germanium thing. And then the Octavia side is based on um, an old Octavia pedal that I had that I always used, mm. the Roger Mayer Octavia. Mm. And, and great pedal, but just yeah. not great for pedal boards. Yeah, yeah. Looks, Looks cool. cool though. Yeah, yeah, it does look cool. So, uh, I mean, I, I love the Octavia uh, yeah. sound. So the, the basic sort of straight Octavia with the volume up pretty much full. Yeah. And then not any drive. Yeah. That's get... And the thing about, um, like, a good Octavia is when it because it, it doesn't quite track properly yeah so when you play more than two notes you get that sort of like modulator yeah. sort of. and that, that one's touch sensitive as well isn't it whereas a lot yeah. of the Octavias even really good ones that um that full tone used to do as well I still always preferred the Roger Mayer one because it was almost kind of um Sitari almost when yeah. you really dug it, but clean almost. You yeah, know, you do get you... that sort of Sitari yeah. kind of. And I like it when it's really uh, quite percussive and yeah. direct and doesn't compress too much. So, yeah. you know, that kind of purple hair. Like, yeah. It's quite a clean, direct it is, yeah. sort yeah. of, uh, it's not mushy. Yeah. You know? um, and then with the gain up a little bit, you can kind of get a bit more. <laughs> Almost like it's it's, it's, just, well, it's almost like how that was going, wasn't it? When it was when uh, when you had that really cranked when when we had the bias yeah. down, it was almost going into that sort of sound, wasn't but it? But to, to be honest, I would probably normally keep that the drive clean. fairly low and then use that as the yeah the, as the uh, fuzz. drive the fuzz mm. yeah. And then the other function is on something that I um, do quite a lot is to when you're on the neck pickup with the Octavia on. <laughs> Is turn the tone down mm -hmm. a bit so you get that kind of yeah. which I always think sounds like a synthy yeah. Stevie Wonder yeah. sort of thing yeah so I thought it'd be cool if you had that as like a preset in here so that that just rolls some of the top end uh. off and it, it sort of takes you to that place straight away without yeah. having to yeah. do anything and I called it the wonder switch because it sounds like Stevie, Stevie Wonder I guess that mode then will really make that side sing even more then as well, won't it? Yeah. So if you if you put that to the kind of the slightly fuzz sound, yeah. Oh, the, do you, with the standard. Thing? Yeah, it's yeah. the more standard fuzz sound because it would be less a less uh, you know a lot of the time when people try the octaves out for the first time, it's like, what oh, is yeah. that doing? Yeah, yeah. So with with the fuzz. Yeah, it's 
kind of awesome, yeah. crazy, a bit more of a crazy sort of yeah. thing. But it's probably a little bit easier to play on that setting with the wonder switch on, I guess, than when it's really bright because it's really. Uh, it is quite bright. Yeah. The, the, by na uh, the sort of nature of the way the Octavia works, yeah. I think it is quite a bright sound. Yeah. But for me, I just wanted something where I could kind of have that straight away, yeah. Straight away and go into that kind of um, synthy. Almost like clavinet. Yeah, sort of it's sounding. got that sound, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and then if you put the put it to that weird kind of spitty sound. Yeah. Uh, and put the fuzz on. It's almost like on off. Yeah. It's almost it's like, like gated. Shot it. Yeah. Really, so you, really. I think kind of uh, Dual Bramwell uses a lot yeah, of those sort of things yeah. where you can. You know, if you got, it has to be loud, really. Yeah. And it makes you it makes you play differently yeah. as well because you yeah. can't you can't um, just hit a note and wait for it to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The doink, yeah. you're gone. <laughs> yeah, um, and again, whether you use the the uh, tone cut or not, you know the treble cut, but sort of probably even crazier. Uh, if you turn the, the drive up a little bit on that side as well. So you just get some crazy yeah, sounds. Awesome, yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely got that wild synth thing going on, hasn't it? Yeah. So I like just using a, a sort of mixture of those things, um, and and just kind of just playing around until you find something that you like. It's a, and mixing the the, the two pedals yeah. together. Yeah. You know, you can either just have it like kind of standard fuzz face, standard Octavia. Yeah. Or you can. Yeah, use use the pedal all the settings to achieve one sound. Almost. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and if you're using it with you know the fuzz as well, you can have this fuzz set a bit differently, and then still, I kind of like having both, so you can still have the germanium thing with the the Octavia. Yeah. Sounds great, doesn't it? Like that, really, really different, really different. So you're using both uh, pedals on the board set like that, then? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how I would have them set, and then depending on how I feel, like might have to. Yeah, uh, whether you have that on or, on or not. Yeah. So a few other little features on the pedal, like this, actually has a. Um, I can't remember what side is it on. An on a, yeah. Yeah, an, an actual on-off, so you can leave that on your pedal board without exactly draining yeah. the battery. Yeah, yeah, because I think with fuzz pedals. They sound best on they battery. They just sound better yeah. with the battery. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can leave it plugged in, turn it off. Sweet. Um, so this one, you have to use a uh, positive tip supply if yeah. you're using it on, with a, with a uh, power supply. And this one is negative tip. Is that right? Yes. That right? Is, yeah. that, is that right? Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it was, yeah. That's um, generally how it is, I guess, with Jermaine. It, it should be all right. The, with the SM fuzz, if it's an isolated power supply, yeah. you'll be okay to just use a normal one. Yeah. But if it's like a daisy chain, that's yeah, why you I'm need sure. a need a reverse uh, polarity. Cool, but they always seem to sound best anyway, don't they? With a, yeah. with a battery and like they last for ages, don't they? As well. Yeah, I think wire pedals and fuzz pedals just sound better with the battery. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's hear some more. Cool.
hard to like turn them off and on, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> at the same time. Oh, it sounds, it sounds amazing, yeah.